Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 8th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Thanks, first of all, to everybody who showed up to the RSA keynote panel today with Alan, Heather and myself. There is a full recording of the panel available on the RSA website. It typically also release it to YouTube relatively soon after the conference. Ed talked about some of the attacks against DNS management consoles, also how DNS fronting is still used in particular in attacks within cloud com providers and from one cloud provider to another. Heather talked about some of the risks that you're exposing yourself with all the personal information that that's available about you from various cloud providers. Now, my part was first of all about some of the issues with DNS over HTTPS and then also what I sort of tend to call peripheral hardware issues like, for example, how BMCs are being used as a beachhead in breaches and also how there's a lot of attention being spent now to actually create viable exploits against Wi-Fi controllers and also renewed interest in Thunderbolt issues. So for the details, just refer to the RSA video and I'll link to it in the show notes. But well, uh, while I was here in San Francisco, Xavier actually posted a pretty nice diary about disposable email addresses. Now, disposable email addresses do have a legitimate reason to exist in particular for privacy, but of course, often bad guys also like to use these email addresses for data exfiltrations and for command and control. So Xavier compiled a list of all of these disposable Disposable email providers that uh, he came across and he published it on GitHub. So you can use it to plug it into your SIM to figure out if any of the outbound communication that you see to these email providers has suspicious content. And storage system provider NetApp is joining the crowd of companies that released devices with default accounts that were not documented. NetApp released updated firmware that will remove this particular account. This was a default account that would allow arbitrary command execution and a large number of NetApp's devices are affected by this problem. And Cisco fixed a vulnerability in its Nexus series switches as well as in its MDS 9000 multiplexer switches. This particular vulnerability affects the NX API in Cisco's NX OS software. With this vulnerability, an authenticated attacker is able to execute arbitrary code as a root. So really more approach escalation, so not as severe as just having a plain backdoor like in NetApp, but still something that you probably want to fix. And Trend Micro is reporting about a new version of what they're calling the slub backdoor. Now, the initial infection vector is a waterhole attack, meaning that typically a website that targets a particular group is being targeted, compromised, and the next exploit for VB script is being installed. Uh, the one that Trend Micro saw was CVE 2018. 8174, which watch was patched by Microsoft about a year ago, back in May 2018. Now, the exploit isn't really all that terribly remarkable. What's sort of different here is the actual command control channel that's being set up here. First of all, it does use GitHub to communicate. GitHub offers a gist service, which is a little bit like Pastebin. You can sort of post little code snippets and exchange 
exchange them among developers. Well, uh, this backdoor uses it just like other backdoors have used, for example, Pastebin, in that it's being used to exfiltrate data and also to exchange commands. The other command control channel that's being used is Slack, which I guess is just sort of the general evolution from IRC to Slack. Uh, we also saw a lot of uh, you know, human communication shifting from IRC to Slack. Slack is often sort of seen as somewhat a successor of IRC, which of course makes it also very attractive for malware. So no real surprise that malware finally discovered Slack and it's using it just like it used IRC in the past. Slack traffic is of course a lot more difficult than to detect because you probably also have legitimate Slack traffic. It's using port 443 and HTTPS. So really not all that easy to distinguish from normal traffic unlike IRC which these days of course sticks out pretty obviously. Well, that's it for today and for March, I think we'll do a little bit of different type of contest than I've done in the past. I have quite a bit of travel come up and in particular next week, I may miss one or two podcasts just because I'll be traveling now. One little challenge here during one week this month, I will not actually state which location I'm in and well, whoever gets it closest first while I'm still at that location will win this month's uh, Raspberry Pi. That's it and thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.